Okay, hello friends. I hope you are ready to get to one of the most complex regions when discussing joints, and that is the knee region. It is an area that we are going to spend probably a little bit more time on than we have in the other dissection supplements, just because there are a lot of structures that are identifiable, that are clinically important, and so let's just kind of take our time and, and make sure that we're feeling familiar with this area and this will really help with uh, some of the clinical lectures and you have a specific knee lecture a little bit later on as well. So let's take our time and we really only have two slides. We're going to have an anterior view and a posterior view. And I want us to make sure that we can tell which side we're looking at, um, find the pertinent bones in that region, and I think this will help in a practical setting being able to identify. So, when looking at this particular image, I want you to try to determine if we are looking at an anterior or a posterior view. So just take a second, based on the stuff that you've been learning, kind of look through this, and let's get an idea. And I'll just go ahead and note that we are looking at an anterior view. All right. I want you to know that my handwriting is a lot better than this, but you know, I'm working uh, with a trackpad and working with what I got. So um, this is the prettiest handwriting I can produce for you right now. So anterior. And let's talk about why we know this. Well, the number one thing that stands out when I'm trying to identify whether I'm looking at anterior or posterior view, is this structure right here, which is your patella. The patella is your largest sesamoid bone. You can feel your patella when you're feeling your anterior knee. The patella is only anterior. So if you can see the patella, which in this case has been reflected, but you do see it in this view, you know that you're looking at an anterior view. Similarly, when this portion right here is your femur, Right here is what's referred to as the patellar surface. So this nice smooth area right here indicates that when not reflected, the patella would sit right here. So that's that patellofemoral articulation that is part of the complex of three different joints wrapped up in one articular capsule in this knee region. So that patella, it, you would think, kind of reflects back up and will articulate with this area right here. The other two articulations are going to be the tibiofemorals. So like I noted, this is the femur, and this right here is the tibia. So this is the proximal tibia. You see that it takes up the majority of the space in the proximal leg. Right here you can see a little bit of the fibula. The fibula does not play a role in terms of the knee joint other than being an area for an attachment uh, for certain ligaments in this region. So you're going to have the medial tibiofemoral joint, which is right here, and the lateral tibiofemoral joint, which is right here. And the reason that I knew which one was medial and which one was lateral, and this is important because this will help in terms of telling the menisci from one another, is fibula is always lateral. So if you can find that fibula, you know that you're looking at the lateral side. This side is going to be medial. So the tibia is the more medial of the leg bones. So once again, the medial, uh, the me excuse me, the medial femoral, femorotibial or tibiofemoral joint, and then the lateral tibiofemoral joint. All right. So now that we have our bearings in terms of the fact that we're looking at an anterior view, we know which is medial and lateral at this point. We know the basic bones in this region, so the femur, the tibia, the fibula, and the patella, which has been reflected. Now we can start getting an idea of what these structures are and how we're going to be able to identify them. And probably the easiest uh, one to identify in this region is when we're looking within what would be inside the articular cavity. Uh, you're going to have your cruciate ligaments. You'll have an anterior and a posterior cruciate ligament. These are referred to as intracapsular, meaning that um, they are not going to be part of these capsular ligaments on the outside. They'll be within the joint. And since we know we're looking at an anterior view, it makes sense that the larger structure 
or the cruciate ligament that's taking up the bulk of this view is going to be your ACL. So what is shaded in purple here will be your ACL. It will be the dominant cruciate ligament that you can see from an anterior view. You can see a little bit in this kind of teal shape or teal um, color is your PCL. So you can see a little bit of the PCL, even though it will be much more dominant when you're looking at a posterior view. So you can see a little bit of that crisscross in the PCL that's going to be posterior to the ACL. All right, when trying to identify the menisci and think about, try to remember what those menisci are. They are those fibrocartilaginous um, structures that are going to be sitting kind of right on top of the tibia right here to help in terms of um, allowing for a better fit with the femoral condyles. And when you're trying to identify which one is the medial meniscus and which one is the lateral meniscus, remember it's all about going back to that osteology. Um, it makes sense that the lateral meniscus would be on the lateral side and if you can find that fibula you know that the fibula is lateral so this right here is going to be your lateral meniscus so the one that is shaded in blue and then knowing that this side is going to be the medial side of this region this is going to be the medial meniscus so the one that's shaded in green here is the medial meniscus. So all about getting back to knowing that osteology is really helpful to being able to identify these ligaments and these menisces in this region. Now I'm going to kind of I'm going to go back so I can kind of clear off um, this so we can see a cleaner view again. And let's figure out those collateral ligaments. And recall, we've seen collateral ligaments in other areas that are going to be flanking the joint. These are going to be taut in terms of when an individual is in extension or standing, and they will become increasingly um, uh, more lax when the knee goes into flexion. So we're going to have these on either side flanking the knee joint. Now once again, let's review. We know that this is lateral and this is medial. And we can see the fibula here, so it makes sense that this yellow shaded structure right here is going to be your fibular or your lateral collateral ligament. Because it, the fibular collateral ligament is going to attach from the femur down to the fibular head. And this will be on the lateral side. You can also see a little bit of a, a black space right here indicating that this is not going to be a thickening of the capsule because the FCL or the LCL is going to be an extra capsular ligament. In fact you have the popliteus tendon that actually is going to extend um, between the FCL and the articular capsule. So it's going to be found in that region. So FCL is going to be yellow in this image. And then the TCL, or the medial collateral ligament, is going to be this wider ligament on the medial side. All right. This particular ligament is capsular, meaning it is a thickening of the medial side of the articular capsule. Also note here that the medial meniscus and your tibial collateral ligament are going to have an attachment to one another. So the medial menis meniscus is going to uh, interweave with some of the fibers, particularly the deep fibers of your TCL. And that particular re relationship in terms of those two structures being connected play an important role because oftentimes if one of those particular structures is damaged, the other one as well. There is a small attachment with the ACL to the men medial meniscus and in some textbooks you see that they're not attached. Uh, they are close enough in relationship that oftentimes, and the ACL is a little bit weaker, that you could have an injury of your ACL, your medial meniscus, and your TCL, and that's referred to as the unhappy triad. So uh, those three structures are very closely related to one another. Okay, so that's the anterior view. Let's look at a posterior view and try to locate those same structures. But first and foremost, let's make sure that we understand why we know or how we're going to know in future iterations that we're looking at a posterior view. And for me, 
when I'm trying to get an understanding of where I'm at, first and foremost, I do not see a patella. So if you do not see the patella, um, that is telling that you're looking at a posterior view. Additionally, I can see in this particular specimen that we have the quadriceps muscles over here. And the quadriceps muscles are going to be anterior. And you can see that these are going to be, uh, this particular expansive muscle is more anteriorly placed. Additionally, and really telling to me are these nice, robust femoral condyles. And if you look back at this view, you see that you can't see the condyles particularly well. But, and that's true, you cannot see them particularly well in an anterior view, but you can see them quite well in a posterior view, and that's exactly what you can see here. So all signs are leading to us knowing that we're looking at a posterior view. Now let's get our bearings in terms of medial and lateral. And for me, again, finding that fibula can, can really help you almost to automatically tell if you're looking at a lateral or medial view. And you can see the femoral head here. So we're, and I'm saying femoral, excuse me, this is fibular. So the fibular head here, this is the femur up here. Um, so fibula, F-I. This is the tibia, which as we noted, is going to be proximally the widest portion um, of the leg and then this is the femur. So we know the fibula is lateral, so we know that this side is lateral, this side is medial, and we are looking at a posterior view. All right, so let's locate these structures and let's start with those cruciate ligaments. This particular image is really nice in terms of seeing that crisscross and similar to how the anterior cruciate ligament was the dominant ligament that you could see from an anterior view, the same is true on the posterior view, but with the PCL. So this right here is your PCL. It is large, it is a strong ligament. Um, it is uh, less typically injured than your ACL, which you can see a, a little bit of your ACL right here. So ACL is shaded in purple here, the dominant a uh, cruciate ligament in this particular view is your posterior cruciate ligament. Now since we figured out which side is medial and which side is lateral, we know that this is going to be your lateral meniscus, and this will be your medial meniscus. Lateral meniscus is going to be on the same side as the fibula. And obviously the ligament that's going to be attached to the fibula is going to be your fibular or your lateral collateral ligament. And then over here, this is going to be your tibial or medial collateral ligament. And once again, I want to note that nice connection between your TCL and your medial meniscus. That particular relationship and that particular connection I brought it up numerous times. Uh, you'll hear it over and over again. That's a very important clinical consideration right there. Okay, so those are the basics in terms of being able to identify the structures of the knee joint, specifically the ligaments. We didn't talk as much about the muscles in this particular section, and that's not because the muscles are not an important do not play an important role in terms of joint stability. In fact, the muscles and the muscle tendons play a huge role, um, but we'll, we'll address those a bit more in um, particular sessions later on specific uh, to the knee. Now one thing that I do want to note before I, I finish off this session is that in this particular, um, or these particular images, you cannot see your patellar ligament very well. All right, so your patellar ligament is going to be the distal um, continuation of your quadriceps tendon. All right, so the patellar ligament. And the patellar ligament in this particular image has been reflected. We're looking at the fat pad. This is what this, is, this shaded in pink, and you don't have to be able to identify that for the practical. But if I were to... Um, place the patella back into place, um, you would be looking straight at the patellar ligament, which plays a huge role in terms of the anterior protection uh, of, the, of the joint. And so what happens is you have that quadriceps tendon that's going, or excuse me, the quadriceps muscle 
which you're, you're going to have on the anterior portion of your thigh. The patella will form within the quadriceps tendon, which makes sense because it's a sesamoid bone, and sesamoid bones form within tendons. And then from the patella down to the tibia, that particular portion from bone to bone, from patella to the tibial tuberosity, that is the patellar ligament. So it's that distal continuation of the quadriceps tendon. So we don't have a particularly great image of it right here. Like I said, we'll discuss that in a bit more detail in um, the lumbar spine in hip and knee lab. Um, but I did want to introduce that here as well because it does play a huge role in terms of the anterior protection of the knee. Okay, so that is a roundup and kind of the tips of the trade in terms of being able to identify the ligaments in the knee region. And like I said, we will return to this a few other times because it's a very clinically important area. As always, feel free to reach out to me or any of my anatomy colleagues on anything anatomy. Uh, we love talking the knee joint, so uh, please do feel free to reach out and have a, a lovely rest of your day.